There are four basic steps to producing a good soldered joint. First, the soldering iron is brought into proper contact with the joint to be soldered. With the other hand, the soldering wire is placed between the bit and the joint in such a way that, if possible, it touches both the bit and the joint simultaneously. Now the resin begins to flow, and this is followed immediately by the melting of the solder. The soldering iron bit is left against the joint for a moment until the solder has completely surrounded the leading out wires. The joint must on no account be disturbed while the solder is solidifying. Here are the four steps again, this time in slow motion. Heat the place to be soldered. Good contact between the bit and the joint is important. Apply the solder, but not too much. It must still be possible to distinguish the leading out wires. Remove the soldering wire and allow the solder to flow around the joint. Remove the iron. Don't disturb the joint while the solder is solidifying. Here is another properly soldered joint. A layer of solder has formed over it, but the outlines of the tag and wire can still be seen. There is no excess solder hanging from the bottom of the joint. The surface is smooth, silvery in colour and concave. Now that you have seen how a good soldered joint is made, we shall show you also in slow motion some of the more frequent mistakes made in the soldering of this type of joint. Where tags are situated close together, solder must be used sparingly to avoid the risk of a short circuit. Here on this valve holder, for example, too much solder has been used, with the result that a short circuit occurs between two tags. This fault can be remedied with the soldering iron. Here as well, too much solder has been used and a short circuit could eventually occur. In soldering, the expression, the more the better, definitely does not apply. However, one must not slip into the opposite error of applying too little solder. The resultant joints are not dependable. To make the joints good ones, solder must be added. The most common cause of bad soldered joints is too rapid soldering, for then the solder may not adequately cover the leading out wires. Such dry joints are often identifiable by the convex instead of the concave shape assumed by the solder. Frequently, they do not become apparent until the equipment has been in use for some time. By applying a hot iron to these joints, and if necessary, adding a little more solder, we can make them effective. A dry joint may also occur because insufficient insulation has been removed. The heat causes the insulation to melt and mix with the solder, with the result that a permanent electrical connection is not made. If heating is carried out too long or too hot an iron is employed, the flux evaporates and the solder burns. This is shown by the grey colour and the rough surface. Moreover, burnt joints frequently show an upright ridge or point. The joints are not strong enough and after some time lose their electrical conductivity. This too can be remedied if the component is unsoldered the tag and wires cleaned fitted in position again and then re-soldered.
If the component is moved while the solder is solidifying, a disturbed joint results. Such a joint is brittle. Air and moisture can penetrate between the solder and the component. In the course of time, such a joint will resist the flow of current. In conclusion, here again are the four steps to good soldered joints. Apply soldering iron and heat the joint. Apply solder and allow it to spread. Remove soldering iron. Do not disturb the joint while the solder is solidifying. If there are one or two connections to one soldering eyelet, this need not entirely be filled with solder. Where there are more than two connections in a single eyelet, it can be soldered as shown or even completely filled. The space between the tag and the leading out wire is, of course, always filled with solder. By working in this way, you will get good joints and achieve the following basic requirements. The layer of solder applied is not too thick. The leading out wires may still be distinguished under the solder. The risk of short circuiting is avoided. The surface of the solder displays a silvery gloss and has a concave shape.